Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Vallad, and welcome to today's webinar, a Learn One New Thing series on Camtasia, the recorder. Uh, I'm an instructional designer and master trainer here at TechSmith, and it's my pleasure to bring you this information today, and thanks for joining us. So if you've never attended a Learn One New Thing session, two things. One, today is the very first Learn One New Thing for Camtasia, so you are trailblazers. Welcome to the club. And the Learn One New Thing series is a short tiny webinar, less than 30 minutes about one topic. If we cover it and there's no questions, we leave for the day. We learn something new and we move ourselves on throughout the day. A couple things to bring up. Uh, we're going to go through some uh, extra things here today. Uh, one thing to note is the chat for today's webinar is disabled. So all your communication, your conversation, your questions will go through that Q&A section, but we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get ourselves going. So the number one question we always get asked is, hey, Jason, is this webinar being recorded? The answer is yes, this webinar is being recorded and you will get a link to that recording sometime in the next 24 hours uh, through the email you use to register for today's event. If you are impatient and you can't wait, there's a really good chance on the webinars page later this afternoon, if you go to view previous webinars, the recording will be up live for you to be able to uh, consume. You can watch it as many times as you want, send it to colleagues and friends, uh, take in that information, share with whomever you think would find it most valuable. Now, I mentioned a little bit about getting answers to your questions. There is the Q&A section down there, and joining me uh, are fellow TechSmithies, Aaron, Melissa, and Robert, and they're going to do their best to answer your questions that come in about today's session. Now, I can't promise they'll be able to answer all of them because there's a few hundred of you fine folks here today, but they will do their best. And if it's a question that's relevant to the whole group, they will send it along to me and I'll try and answer it live uh, during our session. Uh, if it's helpful for you, we have enabled live transcription at the bottom of your screen. All you have to do is click on the closed caption button. Zoom will transcribe their, our session live. They do a pretty good job of it. So if you find that useful, you have that ability to toggle that on as well. A couple other things, and this will be in the follow-up email, is we also have uh, released upon the world uh, projects, uh, TechSmith projects. So it's the opportunity for you to take some of the things that you've learned through our webinars and tutorials and apply them to a cool a multi-day project at self-paced opportunity, techsmith.com slash learn slash projects, and we'll show you that as well. Of course, if you're upgrading from an old version of Camtasia, you can scan this QR code because you can actually get over a 50% discount if you have the current a uh, previous version of Camtasia and you upgrade to our newest version, Camtasia 2022. Side note, we release a new version of Camtasia pretty much every year, and it pretty much happens in the springtime. I'm just going to leave that out there. And uh, we also have an event coming up, a free four-hour digital event called Level Up. Uh, this one is uh, being hosted by me on May 16th with a whole smattering of people that are going to be presenting. If you're interested about that, you can go to techsmith.com slash level up. All right, enough about the slides. Let's get into what we're here for. And today we're talking about the Camtasia Recorder. So I've uh, explained how to use the recorder in many a training and many a webinar, and I always find it's good to return to it to give people best practices and a little bit of a walk around. On the screen right now, in fact, I'm going to turn off my webcam to make sure you get as much of the screen as you possibly can, uh, is this is the TechSmith Home Hub. This is where you can start recordings, you can get into projects, you can go to recent projects, and we're not going to go over this in its entirety, but we are going to pull up this button here, which is new recording. Okay, There is a little flyout button that if you have other parts of the TechSmith world, if you have Audiate or Snagit installed, you can launch those recorders from here as well. But today we're talking about Camtasia. So we're going to click on the Camtasia button. Now, if you don't click this little flyout and you just click the new recording button here, because you're in Camtasia, it's still going to launch the Camtasia recorder. So you don't have to make that extra step if you don't want to. So let's launch the recorder, which is going to take the home hub away, and it's going to bring the recorder interface up on our screen. And here it is. So this is the Camtasia recorder. And typically what I ask people uh, to ask themselves when they're getting ready to do a project where they're going to record their screen or record their webcam is to ask themselves three simple questions. And those questions correlate to different parts of the recorder. So let's ask the very first question is, what do I want people to be able to see? That is where you select your recording space over here on the left. You have a couple of options here. First and foremost, you can actually type in if you have specific dimensions that you want to capture, if you want it to be uh, exactly 1080 or 1440, depending on the size of your monitor. 
But more often than not, people will use this drop down menu here and pick from some of the pre built options. The first section is the screens. Now, I happen to have two screens set up on my computer today. The first one is screen one, which happens to be the one that we're capturing here for the webinar. If I were to select screen two, it's actually gonna give a preview of my other screen. Now you're seeing how the sausage is made, right? This is where all of our notes are being taken. All the chat is happening on my other monitor during webinars. Not that a lot of people get to see that, but if I wanted to record that screen, I could choose that. And I want you to notice something. When I chose screen number two, the dimensions changed because this 1440, my other monitor is a 2K monitor. If I switch back to my first monitor, it switches back to 2160 because my primary monitor over here is a 4K monitor. So I can choose which monitor I want to record, but that's not the least of it. The most you can do as well is choose different um, pre-built dimensions. You know, if you have a specific size that you wanna do, if you're trying to create content for social media, or if you have restrictions on your webpage or wherever you're gonna host that video, you can choose those dimensions here as well as use this choose region, which will bring up our really famous crosshairs like you might see inside of Snagit as well. And you can click and drag on your screen to capture a specific section of your, of your screen because maybe you don't want the entire screen captured. Generally speaking, I recommend to people to record full screen at the highest, best resolution they have available to them. The main reason I uh, suggest that is because when you bring that recording into the editor later on, you can easily zoom into it at high detail. You can crop details out of the out of the recording, but you're starting with a really great crisp recording. Uh, what's my terrible food analogy? Ready, Robert? Here it goes. Let's say you're baking a tray of brownies and you're a big fan of the center cut brownie, the one that has all the soft sides that are gooey and chocolatey. That's what the recording is like. You have to bake the whole pan of brownies to get to that gooey, delicious center. You want to record the whole screen so you can crop it down to the specific details that you want or to zoom in and pan around the screen as best you see fit to share the comp uh, information that you want to in your recording. So that answers the first question. What do I want people to be able to see? And all I have to do is make sure it's toggled on or off by using this little toggle button at the bottom of the recorder itself. Next is, do I want people to be able to see me? So a really great feature inside of Camtasia is the ability to not only capture your screen, but it can capture your webcam at the same time. Uh, this is really helpful if you're trying to convey a message that has a little bit more humanity to show maybe that you're not a, a faceless robot, or if you're super vain like I am, and I love to record myself when I'm making videos. The best part about this is I can choose to have the recording of my webcam taken, but I don't necessarily have to use it in my recording on my video later on. It's better to have it and not need it than to not have recorded it and really wish you had. Now, just like when you choose your screen, you have a drop down menu here that has a few options. The options with the webcam is allowing you to pick uh, amongst cameras if you have multiple ones connected to your machine. Now, I have a laptop which is in clamshell mode right now. It's closed on the bottom of my desk. So I could choose its integrated camera. Um, I've got a virtual camera, the Elgato one that's plugged into a device I have. Um, I have OBS included on my machine, but for the most part, I use this. This is my cam link. It's a Canon uh, DSLR 800D uh, camera that I use as a webcam. So it's a really nice picture. You should be seeing pretty good view of it. Um, but I have that chosen as my webcam. So Camtasia will record that uh, when it's time to capture the video. So that answers my second question. Do I want people to be able to see me? Now the entire team's talking about brownies. Now I want brownies. Yeah, brownies are later. So we've answered two questions. What do I want people to be able to see? Can they see me? And then the third question that I personally, even though it's a video, I find to be the most important in my world, and that's, can they hear me? This is where you can toggle on and off your audio recording. Um, right now it's toggled on and you can tell that it's being, microphone is being picked up because you see the little uh, audio gauge jumping up and down. I also have a drop down menu here that allows me to choose between different microphones if I have multiple ones plugged in. This one, this microphone array is the built-in one to my laptop. But the one I've chosen is this AT2020. This is my microphone that I use for all my recordings and my webinar. I've been using it for, oh, we just talked about this, Robert. I think I've been using this for eight years. 
Uh, it's tried and true. I love it. Great audio quality. I know how it works. But I make sure Camtasia sees that microphone so that it's picking up that audio. And I can tell it is because it is jumping around in the audio meter. Now, people always ask, well, how do you know how it's going to sound? Um, it's always great to do a sample recording just to know, but you also want to learn how to place your microphone. I have mine off to the left of me because I have a big voice and I talk pretty loud and I know that it's being picked up. But a general rule of thumb, I call it the hang loose method. Um, if you're able to take your hand and stretch your pinky and your thumb far apart, it's roughly the distance that you want between your mouth and the microphone. If you place it in that position and talk in your normal daily talking volume, you should be able to capture really great audio. If you get a little too close, you'll notice that the audio meter jumps way too high, gets into this yellow and green, or excuse me, yellow and red. And if you're too far away, you might not pick up the audio that you want. So it might take a little bit of practice a couple of times or some experimentation to find out exactly where the mic should be for you to pick up the best audio for your situation. So just like before, I can toggle these on and off. If I don't want microphone collected, I can toggle this off as well. So that answers those three questions I was talking about. What do I want people to be able to see? Do I want them to see me? Can they hear me? And then people say, but Jason, there's a fourth box there. And that's true. This box is for system audio. And you can toggle this on if you would like. So what is system audio? System audio is any sounds or noises that would come from your computer on a regular daily basis. So if you're making a video on how to do something and you know there's going to be an error tone that pops up or some sort of <clears throat> or notification, if you have this toggled on, Camtasia will rec record that system audio as well. This also means if you have your email turned on and you forgot to turn it off and then email notification pops in, you will get uh, that notification sound as well. I am really intentional about this button. I know what types of videos I'm going to make. And if they're not going to include any audio that's coming from your system, I just leave it toggled off. But the argument could be made, just like your webcam, it's better to record it and not need it later because you can easily delete it from your editor versus wishing you had turned it on and it wasn't. So I will leave that to you, personal preference. Best practice for me is to leave it off, but I might not be making the same style of videos. That you're making. Let's talk about one other big part of the recorder, and that is this, the tools drop-down menu. So there is a preferences menu option sitting over here that you can toggle on to take a look at some of the controls you have within the recorder. Um, by default, the general section here is always checked on. It's going to show a countdown, a 3 2, one countdown that's going to happen after you hit your red record button. Um, if you happen to pause your recording, the cursor will be remembered where it is. So let's say you pause it because you need to go check a frantic email somewhere else. When you go to resume your recording, the cursor is not going to jump back into place. It's just going to be there so you can start your recording with the cursor in the same spot. It also is toggled on to not capture the recorder. This is really helpful because with new versions of Microsoft Windows, when you hit record, the recorder itself is going to actually shrink down. And uh, a small little window is going to show up that's got your pause button and your stop button, stuff like that. While it's on your screen, it won't be captured by Camtasia. It's going to be masked. So you can confidently control the recording from a pausing and stopping perspective without worrying about it being captured on your screen. Uh, exit the recorder at the re after the recording is stopped. We always have that checked. That means when you stop your recording, the editor is going to pop up and the recorder is going to go away. And same thing, the editor is going to pop up when you hit stop. The files tab, I don't mess with this typically, but this is going to show where the default save location is. Uh, by default, there is going to be a folder in your documents folder on Windows called Camtasia, and that's where your recordings are going to go. You can change it. Uh, you can ask Camtasia before they save it. Hey, let me name my file. You can do all those controls right within the preferences tab here. From inputs, this is where you can choose a few parameters of your screen recording, whether or not you want to change your capture frame rate. Um, right now, you can toggle between 30 frames per second, which is completely fine for your standard screen recordings, but you can also choose uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, you can change the encoder. I recommend you don't unless you have a specific reason to. This is our uh, codec that allows for the recording capability, and it gathers all that rich metadata that allows you to later... Uh, change the cursor around and make changes to your recording that way. Um, the camera default dimensions, right now I've got the camera recording in uh, 1080p. 
and it's recording at 50 frames per second. It's recording at 50 frames per second, not 30 or 60, because it is a European variant of a Rebel 7 Ti. So don't let this throw you off. This information will be available and captured in terms of the type of camera you have plugged in. And then last but not least, there's a shortcuts menu where you can change your default keyboard shortcuts for recording, uh, for pausing, for resuming the recording, for stopping, or adding a marker on your timeline. You can change those as much as you'd like. All right. So what would happen at this point is when you hit the red record button, you would get a three, two, one countdown, and then Camtasia, based on your parameters that you've selected, would capture everything you're saying and everything you're doing on your screen. There is a green dotted line around the outside of my monitor that's showing me the recording area. Now, before I hit record, if I really wanted to not record full screen, I could grab any one of those um, radial buttons and adjustment handles and move it down and record just parts of the screen if I wanted to, but rarely do I do this. Um, and matter of fact, when you change the recording dimensions, it changes it to a customized region over here. So it's reflected in your recorder of what you're going to capture. For me, I typically leave it. I'm telling you, I leave it at full screen because I find the most flexibility by having a lot that I can work with, you know, cutting out those center brownies. Uh, I'd rather have more than I need and cut away what I don't. It's just a, it's a personal preference. It's easy to create your first video that way without having to uh, capture a certain section of the screen and fear if you're going to move a program out of the way or something gets caught in the middle. That being said, that's largely what we want to capture around the recorder. I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. Um, we talked about the microphone. Uh, do you need an external microphone is a question I get asked the most often. Um, no, you don't. You can use the built-in microphone that you have on your laptop. Uh, the difference is that microphone tends to be close to your keyboard typing so or the fans spinning up, so you might get some of that noise. Uh, the easiest way to up the quality of your videos from an audio perspective is to plug in an external mic. It doesn't have to be a multi-hundred dollar one. It could be a $30 USB-based mic. All I would suggest that is if you want to test out recording with a different mic within Camtasia, plug it in, do a sample recording, and uh, see how it sounds for you. Gotcha. All right, so let's go over to our questions because Aaron and Melissa and Robert have been going like gangbusters answering questions. Uh, team, is there any questions that have come in so far? Uh, Melissa, I might call you out directly on this one with a little bit of help, if you're willing. So we got a question um, that most people ask, and that is, what is the difference between the Mac recorder and the Windows recorder as far as Camtasia? So visually, they're pretty similar, right? You're still going to have those same four sections. They might look a little different, but the way they behave is the same. Uh, you'll have what you want to choose to record as far as your screen, your webcam, uh, your microphone, and your system audio. All those things are in there as well. But Melissa, are there specific question, uh, specific differences that you would like called out? Yeah. So I don't know if my audio is okay. Um, it is. The yep. question that came through in our question and answer section was finding the toolbar that you brought up in the windows, like where it says capture and tools. That is mm -hmm. not there in, it's different. Um, and you can find that a little bit differently on when, on the Mac side. You would have to open gotcha. up Studio and click on Camtasia on the left, and go to Settings, mm -hmm. and then Capture, or Recording, yep. sorry. No, so if you're, yeah, if you're used to a Mac program interface, the same way you would find settings or preferences, uh, my keyboard shortcut for that, I think default is like the uh, command comma on the right-hand side, typically pulls up your preferences. You will have access to those as well. Good point. That's a really good point. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. And thank you, whoever asked that question. Uh, let's see, are there other questions that have come through? I want to make sure that we're getting some questions Um that are available. So uh, the other thing is um, if you're familiar with or utilize TechSmith's Audiate tool, you might choose to not record your audio here. You might choose to just do your screen recording or you might record your audio and then edit in Audiate. That's an entirely separate uh, webinar that we're gonna be doing pretty soon here, actually in the next couple of weeks. Um, while we're looking for more questions, I do wanna show you a couple of things 
on the website that might be really helpful for you. Um, this, let's just minimize the recorder. On TechSmith.com, when you go to the support menu up at the top and choose webinars, this is where you may have found uh, the ability to sign up for today's webinar, or you might've gotten an email or seen it in a newsletter. Um, all of that is here. What I want you to look at is over here on the left, there are these filters that allow you to choose the kind of content you want to learn. So if you like the learn one new thing webinar style, well, we have a few coming up. I'm going to be adding a lot more. So always check back to this page. But we're going to talk a little bit more about Audi8 and Camtasia here coming up soon. Um, you can also filter by the product itself. But the thing that I find really valuable as much as I love doing webinars is there is an entire library of our previous webinars right here. If you go to uh, looking for previous webinars, there's a button here that says, let's go. And it allows you to pull up every recording that we've done, I believe since last spring, so spring of 2022, that are also filterable. So if you are a fan of the Learn One New Thing series, here is all of the ones that we've done so far. We've got nine of them that we did in Snagit. Like I said, today is the very first one in Camtasia uh, that you have uh, access to, but you can filter things here in those recordings. And if I get all the recording from today set up right, sometime this afternoon in this first slot, when the page gets refreshed, will be the webinar that you're a part of right now. Cool. So very cool. Let's see, what other kind of questions do we have here? Um, there was somebody asking about uh, the, the delay that they were seeing between my mouth speaking and the uh, little preview in the Camtasia recorder right here. That is largely due to Zoom. That's definitely not something we have. When you see the recording, it'll be crisp. If I toggle the camera off in uh, Camtasia, but toggle it back on here in Zoom, it should be a little bit better. It's just something that deals with live broadcasting and running the webinar software at the same time. So I apologize about it. It's not something I currently can control. So uh, let's see, any other questions? Any advice on how to get audio to be the same when you record across different sessions? I use the same mic in the same room, but audio from one session to the next sounds differently. This is Kristen. So yeah, that's one of my top pet peeves. And that can be fixed a couple different ways. One is uh, you're right. If you record here in my office in the morning and then come back after lunch, uh, even if you sit exactly in the same spot and place the mic in the same position, atmospheric things change in your room, right? The temperature changes. There might be a different breeze. You may lean back a little bit more. Uh, you may be hesitant to speak louder because you ate some food and you don't want that mouth noises. All those things come into play. Uh, the best way to fix that is actually by using a tool like Audiate to have a filter set that you've already built in, the effects. I actually have effects built into my audio, one that says uh, Jason morning, Jason afternoon, because I know that it changes. Uh, a lot of it comes through practice, but definitely um, experimenting with those filters and applications within a tool like Audiate is pretty helpful. Uh, let's see, Aaron, Melissa, and Robert, were there any other questions that came in uh, that you would like me to address for everybody? Uh, Elisa asked, uh, what recommendations do you have on a microphone? Uh, yeah, whatever one you have available to you is the best microphone. That's kind of, I mean, that's that's the true thing, right? Use what you have available and don't uh, don't let not having a grandiose microphone be the, the detriment to you making videos. Uh, Robert had mentioned, we he and I both use the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB Plus. Uh, I bought it like eight or nine years ago. It was $150 at the time, which felt like a lot, but I've now used it for almost a decade. So I've basically been renting it for myself for $15 a year. Uh, any USB-based mic, so a Blue Yeti, uh, Samson has one, the C, oh, you wrote it, CO1U, they're really great mics. There are a lot of great options in there. And since the world changed a couple of years ago and a lot of people started working from home, your entry-level USB microphones that you can buy on the shelf at most uh, big box electronic stores, pretty, pretty nice. Pretty simple, pretty uniform for people as well. Deborah is uh, offended because she is a corner brownery person. So is my wife. Uh, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I like brownies in general. So if you put a brownie in front of me and it's a center one or a corner one, I'm not going to say no, but I appreciate that just the same. Uh, let's see. 
So Jared is saying, next time I'd love to see an example of what the files look like separated post-recording. Um, I'd love to know a little bit more about, look, Melissa's taking care of you as well, about what you're looking for. There is lots of our webinar content around that. The, like I said, the goal with these Learn One, One New Things was to keep it short and sweet and very focused on one item. But when we end this webinar and when you leave, you are going to be presented with a quick four-question, one-minute survey where you do have the opportunity to tell us how we did but there's an open-ended question about what more could we do. If you let us know about other webinar ideas that you have, I have taken many of our ideas directly from requests from our customers, from people that have attended our webinars. That's where the Learn One New Thing session idea came from, was people were like, I love the long, hour-long webinars. I learn a lot, but I really want to learn about this tool, or I'm afraid to click this button, or what happens if, like scenario-based ones. Those are the kind of webinars that we love to conduct, and we want to make sure that we're reaching out to you and conducting the ones that make the most sense. All right. We are just about at time. See, I told you these things go quick. So the last thing I want to pull up, we'll say goodbye to Camtasia here, is just a reminder about the, the level up session. But you, of course, are going to get a copy of the recording, as we said. Um, there is the handout that will come in the email as well as a link. Uh, we want to make sure that... Um, uh, everybody gets answers to their questions to the best of our ability. Uh, our team has already answered 50 questions from our attendees today. So thank you for participating and asking those questions. We got about uh, one more minute or so. If anybody else has other questions, that are, everybody's answering their questions. I love it. Uh, let's see. Desiree says, oh, she's already getting it. Aaron, Aaron's already answering that question. A lot of questions about people recording in their home environments, right? So I'm sitting in a home office right now. And if I go dead silent, I'm hearing a couple things. I'm hearing the fan I've got going in the corner of the room. I hear the fan spinning on my laptop. And my neighbor is, no joke, operating heavy machinery in his lawn right now. They're putting in some sort of gorgeous patio. I don't think you're hearing any of that right now. Part of that is because I spent good money on Windows, but that's another conversation. But part of it is because uh, both Camtasia and tools like Zoom and Audiate through your microphone do a pretty good job of removing some of that background noise just off the bat. Like there's, it depends on the direction of your microphone and there's omnidirectional. There's, we could talk about microphones and it would be someone I would bring on because whew, I'm not the expert on microphones. But if you uh, are recording in a similar environment and you're running into consistent issues, see if you can pinpoint some of those. Um, but I also would suggest, you know, testing some recordings with the materials you have available to you, whether it's in the room, using that microphone, or uh, doing a sample recording of the style of video that you're hoping to create. Okay. It looks like we have answered all the questions and the last couple that have come in are being answered by our team. So I'm going to say thank you for that. So this is where I say thank you so much for being a part of today's session. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being a part of the inaugural Camtasia Learn One New Thing session. If you would take the time to answer those questions in the survey, we would really appreciate it. I personally appreciate it. I read through all of your responses uh, to the last very one, and I appreciate that. And my thanks, of course, to Aaron, Melissa, and Robert for being a part of today's session. Please sign up for future webinars. Check out the recordings, and I hope you found this useful. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Take care.